Evening, everyone. Good evening. Good to see you all this evening in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Keep the pastor in your prayers. He's not been feeling well, to be sure. Keep him in your prayers. Um, he did ask me yesterday, he said, I may not feel well in the morning when I preach. I said, if you need me, I'll be there. So and then he called me this morning and said, he's ready. I said, okay, that's good. And then this afternoon he said, I think I'm wore out from this morning. I'm like, okay. So I already had something ready, so that was good. That was a good thing. So um, <clears throat> let's turn in our Bibles this evening to 2 Chronicles, the Old Testament book, 2 Chronicles. That's after 1 and 2 Kings. 2 Chronicles, chapter 30. Just going to read a few verses, verses 13 through 16. 2 Chronicles 30, 13 through 16. Please stand with me once you've found it, out of respect for God's Word. 2 Chronicles 30, 13 through 16. A very large crowd of people assembled in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month. They removed the altars in Jerusalem and cleared away the incense altars and threw them into the Kidron Valley. They slaughtered the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the second month. The priests and the Levites were ashamed and consecrated themselves and brought burnt offerings to the temple of the Lord. Then they took up their regular positions as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood handed to them by the Levites. Bow your heads, please. Precious Heavenly Father, we ask that you would just speak to us from your word this evening. Teach us and encourage us, strengthen us, and help us to draw closer to you. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Now, it's a battle that every mother has definitely fought with their children in every generation. That three-word charge that can make the difference often, especially during flu season, between <coughs> Getting sick or staying or remaining well. What are those three words? Wash your hands. Exactly. Wash your hands. It could be okay with most kids if washing their hands was maybe just a monthly exercise. Or maybe some uh, once a week thing at the most. Right? Most young kids. Oh, do I have to wash my hands? It seems they always forget, right? You stop... Hey, you're going to eat, your, did you wash your hands? Mm, go wash them, right? You always do it. Go wash them. Our kids did it. I'm sure your kids have done it too. They come in from doing who knows what, who knows where, with those little hands, and then they say, they're not dirty. Now, there may not be any brown slime dripping from their little hands, no, but you can be sure that they're carrying all sorts of nasty stuff on them. And isn't it amazing what happens when you get a little soap and water on those hands? All of a sudden, the sink suddenly is covered with some pretty yucky looking stuff. After their hands were, they were dirty, right? They weren't dirty. They start to put a little soap and water and all kinds of stuff come off those hands and from under the fingernails and all that good stuff. Surprise, kids! Maybe you couldn't see it, but your hands, guess what, were dirty. Amen. They get dirty all the time. Every time you're touching something, they get dirty. You just didn't realize how dirty they were. My sermon title for this, e for this evening, actually I had typed in here this morning, I actually caught myself, this evening is the Dirty Hands Detector. The Dirty Hands Detector. Our scripture for... This evening comes from 2 Chronicles. The main one is 2 Chronicles 30, 15, where some folks who thought they were clean found out about the dirt they didn't know they were carrying. It's the time of King Hezekiah, one of the greatest of Judah's rulers. When he takes the throne, the nation is in a moral and spiritual sewer. Hmm, sounds a lot like today, right? with idolatrous altars literally on every street corner. But Hezekiah turns his entire culture around and leads the people into a powerful national revival. 
Wouldn't that be great to happen here? <clears throat> a national revival. We'd love to see that in America. Now, this national revival, though, really didn't start with the king. It started, he pushed it along, but it started with the spiritual leaders in the nation. You know what? It always does start with the spiritual leaders. It always starts in the church if we're going to have revival in a nation. It's not going to start in the White House. It's not going to start in Washington, D.C. It's not going to start in our state capitol. It will start in our churches. It always does. We need revival, and we need it today, and it needs to start in our churches. So, after cleaning out the neglected and defiled temple of God, Hezekiah calls the people together for a national Passover celebration. Now, it's been a long time since the people of God had observed this holy remembrance of God's deliverance. Now, listen to what happens to the spiritual leaders, the priests, and the Levites as they begin to prepare for this holy moment. Okay? Now, remember, they hadn't had Passover for a long, celebrated Passover for a long time. This was big. This was a big celebration to bring back this revival, to bring back this celebration of God's deliverance of the people of Israel. So as the priests and the Levites begin to prepare for this holy moment, this is what the Scripture says. They slaughtered the Passover lamb. Pause. The priests and Levites were ashamed and consecrated themselves and brought burnt offerings to the temple of the Lord. Then they took up their regular positions. Hmm. Why did they stop? Why did they all of a sudden become ashamed? Here, the leaders, the spiritual leaders, are in the middle of preparing for a service. And suddenly they stop what they're doing, and they, they ashamed. They, don't, they feel this heaviness on their heart. Suddenly, they are deeply aware of their sin, their compromises, their failures. They feel the heaviness of the way they've been living on their lives. Wow, this is the spiritual leaders of the nation. So what do they do to get over their shame? What do they do? Do they try to rationalize it? No. Do they try to sweep it under the rug and hide it? Do they try to ignore it? Nope, nope, and more nope. They instead consecrate themselves to God. These are the spiritual leaders. I mean, I'm sure there are some sitting there going, hey, you're supposed to be our spiritual leaders. And what? Oh, you're asking for forgiveness. Oh, I... think about what that message sent to the people. That their spiritual leaders even needed to consecrate themselves to God and ask for forgiveness for how they had been living. They needed to get rid of the garbage that had been dirtying up their hearts and their lives. Even the spiritual leaders needed it. Okay? So there's something very powerful here in this scene. Something that any of us who have been given any spiritual leadership needs to absorb here this evening. Like these priests and Levites, Maybe you or I have been entrusted with some spiritual responsibility. Maybe you're on the church board. Maybe you teach a Sunday school class. Maybe you're on the Sunday school board. Maybe you're leading a committee. Maybe you're help, just helping around the church. Maybe you're counseling people. Maybe you're organizing things. But in some way, you are doing God's work, and in doing so, are representing Him around the church. You are representing God here working in the church. That's all of us, right? All of us that are doing something. Now look what happened to the spiritual leaders in Hezekiah's day. As they began to do God's work and handle that which is holy. Okay? Everything you do for God, you are handling something holy. If you are teaching a Sunday school class, you are on the church board, you're singing in the choir, you're, you're you know, playing the piano or the organ or guitar, or you're, whatever, you're counting money, or whatever you're doing in the church, you are handling that which is holy because you are being God's advocate in that situation. You are serving God in that responsibility in God's house, among God's people. You are handling that which is holy. 
And that's what these Levites and priests were doing. And then they suddenly realized they were not holy enough to handle it. Think about that. These were the holiest men in the nation, and they were not holy enough to handle that which was holy. They didn't realize all the dirt that was on their hands until they began to, began to handle holy things. They didn't realize it until they saw the seriousness of it, what they were doing for God. And all of a sudden, the light went on, and they were like, ooh, we need to, take a, we need to pause here for a second. We need to, to, to re-consecrate ourselves to God. We need to ask for forgiveness. We need to be cleansed if we're going to be handling that which is holy. We all need to do that. We all need to examine ourselves if we are carrying out responsibilities for God. We need to make sure that we are ready to handle that which is holy. That's exactly what should be happening to us, which happened to those priests and those Levites. To you and me, as we do the work God has given us to do, we need to see the dirt in our lives that we need to deal with before we handle the holy. Think about that for a second. We need to make sure we're ready to handle that which is holy, that God has put us to the task. Maybe it's our tongue that needs cleansed. Maybe. From gossiping, or lying, or telling dirty jokes, or, or just talking people down, or whatever it is. Maybe we need, before we handle the holy, we need our tongue cleansed. Maybe. Maybe it's a rotten, bitter attitude. Maybe it's a grudge we're holding against someone when God is calling us to forgive them. Maybe. Put in there whatever sin you may be dirtying up, that may be dirtying up your life, whatever it is, and you need to give it to God if you're going to handle that which is holy. If you're going to represent God in this church, if you're going to represent this church out there in the community, we need to prepare for that. We need to make sure that God takes us and cleans us up. And that way we're prepared to handle that which is holy. Ask God to forgive you of it. And also ask him to give you the strength and the wisdom to overcome whatever it is you've been dealing with in your life. Whatever it is that's been hindering you. Whatever it is that's standing between you and God. Maybe, not make, maybe keeping you from being a good witness. Maybe whatever's been keeping you from being a witness out there in the community for him. We need to make sure we ask him to forgive us. And then to ask him to give us strength and wisdom to overcome that which we've been dealing with. First, we need to always remember we are handling the very things of God. Our holy, holy, holy God. Don't ever let your work for him become careless or mechanical or self-serving. It is a solemn, serious, even dangerous mistake to handle the holy without clean hands. It is. That's why God says in Isaiah 52, 11, Touch no unclean thing. Come out from it and be pure, you who carry the vessel of the Lord. If we're going to be ambassadors for God, for this church, we need to make sure that we get ourselves cleaned up. And it's everybody. Everybody. We all need to do it. Serving Christ is not fun and games or just some ritual or some little spiritual exercise. It requires a holy life behind it, day after day after day, serving God, living for Him, obeying Him, living according to His standards. That's what we need to do. It requires a holy life behind it, and it produces a holy life if you let it sink in to here. It produces a holy life. What an incredible honor it is to be asked by an all-powerful, almighty, holy God to handle that which is His. That's an awesome responsibility. It, it's a wonderful privilege and an honor, okay? Like a child, you may look at what people can see of you and me and say, my hands aren't dirty. Ah, I can do this, no problem. But let Jesus, your Savior, begin to show you and I what we're doing that he can't bless. Think about that. Are there parts of your life that if Jesus were standing next to you, when you were doing it, or saying it, or acting that way, or feeling it, that he couldn't bless? Think about that for a second. And if there are, we need to ask him to forgive us. If there is any sin in your life, he can't bless it. He can't. 
And then let him cleanse your hands before you touch the sacred, before you become the ambassador out there in our, in our community, before you follow through with the work that God has for you to do, let him cleanse your hands before you put your hand to the plow. Let him do it. No child should ever handle food without clean hands, should they? I mean, I'm sure we've all told our children, before you eat, wash your hands. If you go into any fast food restaurant, in the restroom, there's always a sign right there that says, employees must wash hands before going out and handling any food or doing anything else. I hope they do that. I want them to do that, right? So do you. Think about this. What God has for you is so much more important than somebody's fast food order. We need to have clean hands for God. We need to make sure that we have pure hearts and that we're serving God. We're, we'll never serve God to the fullest if we're allowing these things to hinder us. Our mouth, our attitude, our, our actions, whatever they may be, we must give them to God. And I know it's not easy. There are habits that we have. We may have a habit of being grumpy or having a bad attitude. Maybe especially in the mornings, maybe you're not a morning person. I, I don't know. Whatever it is, allow God to help you. Whatever it is. Maybe, you know, you go and hang out around the, the guys or the girls and gossip. Always the first thing it always starts with the gossip. And it's hard to stop that. You know, you remember Hee Haw, the, the girls singing, and you know, you'll never hear one of us repeating gossip. Why? See, or, or you better be sure to listen the first time, right? Remember that little song they used to sing? Well, gossip. If you can't stop the gossip, maybe it's, stop, it's time to stop hanging around the guys or the girls that, that do the gossip. Maybe. Or at least tell them, I don't want to participate in any of that gossip or whatever it is. Whatever it may be. Again, we are to be ambassadors for Christ. We are to be ambassadors for this church. And we need to make sure that we are handling God's responsibilities with clean pure hands. God, and no, or no, okay, so no child should handle food with, without have clean, having clean hands. No child of God should handle the holy work that God gives them to do without pure hands and a pure heart. And that God will call it clean if you do, if, if you let him cleanse them. You know, if, if God doesn't call your hands clean, they're not clean. Because you know your children say their hands are clean and you say, I'm inspecting them. God will inspect our hands. If he's not calling your hands clean, they're not clean. We need to make sure they get cleaned up before we handle the things of God. Are your hands clean today? Are my hands clean today? They need to be if they're going to do God's work. They need to be. And they can be if we allow God to cleanse them. If we allow God to change us from the inside out. We talked about this morning in our, our Sunday school class. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. If we allow the Holy Spirit, allow Him to do that work in us, He will take care of those things. Bitterness, anger, hate. Pastor talked about some of those things this morning. You know, uh, again, gossip, dirty jokes, the, uh, talking about your neighbor behind their back, lying, uh, whatever it may be. If we allow the Holy Spirit to do His work in our lives, allow Him to do that spiritual surgery, and to do that spiritual hand, that cleaning of us, then, and only then, will we be worthy, and will we be ready to serve God, and to carry out those things He has us to do. And that's any duty, whether it's anything in this church that you and I do, anything that we do as a representative of this church out there, all that, that is the holy. And we need to make sure that our hands are cleansed, they're clean, before we handle the holy. So again, I ask you this evening, are your hands clean? If they're not, they need to be. And you need to ask God to clean them. Stand with me, please. Rick, would you close the prayer, please?